Hi, everyone. I'm glad you're here because today's episode is a doozy. Today, I have three stories that nearly shattered everyone involved as they tried to rationalize what happened to them. Just wait until you hear what you're about to hear. So if you're enjoying the channel, don't be invisible. Let us know you're out there and smash that subscribe button so we can always be together. Thanks. Now let's get into the stories. I'm not going to sign my name to this because I'm afraid I might lose my job. I'm a park ranger near Clemson, South Carolina. I'm only writing because I think the people have a right to know what's out there. There's a cluster of parks here in what we call the Mountain Bridge Wilderness. It includes Table Rock, Caesars Head, and Jones Gap State Parks. I'm not going to tell you which one this happened in, but they're pretty close together. I think people should be careful in all of them. First off, I'm not the only person who saw this. The reason I was on this particular trail was because a hiker reported seeing something unusual. He was pretty rattled, but very vague. We all figured it was a hoax of some sort, so I was assigned to investigate it, and I had to hike six miles out on a trail that ends in a waterfall. This is a pretty rough hike and not very well traveled. Honestly, we have so many waterfalls in this area. People seem to prefer going to the ones that have easy access and end in a shallow pool where their kids can swim. This waterfall is pretty, but it's not very big, and it's not very popular. I was looking forward to the assignment. I'm not one for hanging out at the ranger's office or patrolling campsites to make sure nobody's breaking the rules. I usually volunteer if there's a job that takes me further out into the woods, like trail maintenance and stuff. So, I was hiking this particularly steep stretch before you get to the falls when some rocks started sliding. Not like a rock slide disaster, just a bunch of smaller rocks and debris cascading down from above me on the trail. We have a lot of deer and some black bears here, and that sort of phenomena is usually caused by a large animal up ahead. So, thinking it might be a bear, I was proceeding with caution. I got to the top and I looked around before I headed west in the direction of the falls. It's rare to see anybody up here, so I wasn't surprised to see the area was deserted. I was ready to take a load off, so when I got to the falls, I found a nice shady flat rock and I sat down with my water bottle, figuring I had earned the break. I was planning to scout the area afterward and then head back down. So I'm just sitting there, thinking about my day, when I heard something crashing through the brush on the other side of the falls. The woods are pretty thick back here. I stayed still and quiet, figuring some wildlife was coming to take a drink. It was something coming to drink, but it wasn't anything I had ever seen before. I kid you not, this thing looked almost like a deer, but only if the deer had died and started to decay. Its head was just bone, a skull with empty eye sockets, but it was definitely alive somehow and moving, not to mention huge. I know most people would think I was a lunatic, but I've heard you read some letters like this on here, so I know I can speak plainly. This thing was dead. Dead, but somehow alive. You could smell the decaying flesh on its body and see bones poking through here and there on its neck. It had lowered its head to the water like it was going to drink, and I'm sitting on the other bank, too scared to even breathe. All I could think of was, this is not real. And then it saw me. It lifted its head, and those empty eye sockets just pointed straight at me. And suddenly I could see the red inside them, glowing like coals on a campfire. I totally panicked, knowing this thing was some kind of a devil. I jumped up and I ran, but then I heard a splash. I didn't turn around, but I was afraid that the thing had jumped into the shallow water and was chasing me. I just flew down that trail, crashing into limbs, scraping my face, trying to keep my balance on all those loose rocks. I'm lucky I didn't fall off the mountain and kill myself, to be honest. By the time I got maybe a mile and a half away, I slowed down and I listened. I didn't hear anything behind me. I can't explain what that thing was, but I know what I saw. Maybe it was some kind of an evil spirit, although you couldn't see through it. Or maybe there's just creatures out there that we never see because they've gotten so good at hiding. 
I also don't know if it was intending to hurt me. Was it chasing me? It seemed like it, but who's to say? There was an undeniable aura of, I guess you could say, evil around it. I know I never want to meet up with it again. I didn't report it. Maybe that sounds cowardly, but I didn't need to lose my job over this, or get told that I needed to see a shrink. I do think that people should be cautious going into the woods, any woods, especially that area of South Carolina. There's danger out there, danger in a form of which you'd never expect. Please be safe, everyone. Don't hike alone. I had been an officer of the law many years prior to becoming part of the Transit Railroad Police. I had been working in a large city, and I wanted a change. So my wife and I moved to a smaller town, and I got a job patrolling some important and historical railroad tracks in Pennsylvania. It was quite the shift. I didn't have to deal with nearly any of the stuff I had seen in New York, and it was much more peaceful. But I'll admit, I was going a little stir-crazy after about a month or two. It was literally just too quiet. My daily duties were pretty simple, and they were as follows. Don't let anybody get into trouble. It was really rare when I had an occurrence where I needed to really be an enforcer. My wife was pretty pleased with this, but I sure did miss the action of the city. Staring at railroad tracks was like watching paint dry. Sure, I spent more time at home than at work, but the days felt like they just dragged on. I was waiting for something to happen. Something exciting. Anything. And sure enough, something did. It was a grim, rainy day. Everything was gray. Everything was wet. And I remember thinking, great, another boring day. People would rather stay inside and keep dry than go out on a day like this and stir up any trouble. Little did I know that mudslides were not unheard of with the areas of the railroad on days like this. We had plenty of landslide scares that day. My wife was pretty worried. She didn't like the idea of me being around a natural disaster. But I told her that after dealing with some pretty scary people in the city, a landslide would be a piece of cake. But I was terribly wrong. To make matters worse, I had been stuck late at work that day. I guess that's what happens when you take quiet life for granted. I was finishing up for the night. Many of the emergency disaster help had gone home after cleaning up, but I wanted to make sure that everything would be safe and okay for the next day. I also had this very intricate report that I had to fill out, very detail-oriented in this area, and everything was still pen and paper. No computer screens. My report took a few hours to fill out, and I figured that before I went home, I'd head out and inspect that same area of the railroad again. So I went back down to the area. The rain had cleared up, but the whole place felt pretty dreary. There was plenty of fog, which reminded me of some old spook show. And I just remember it hitting me and me thinking, wow, this is pretty creepy. I don't like this. And that's when I saw something out west, towards the trees. I wasn't used to this many trees and being surrounded by full-on nature. I literally forgot about the possibility of a wild animal roaming. But when I got to remembering, I'm thinking, no, it's an elk or a deer or something like that. That wouldn't be unusual. The only thing that was unusual was that I could hear my thoughts out there. But I got back to business. I'm checking off this list of things and I'm really trying to make sure I have everything covered. And then I hear something moving around off to the west again. So I stopped, I looked around, and I got to wondering about what would happen if I were to face an elk. Would the elk hurt me? I wasn't sure. I had some bear mace. That would work on an elk if it came down to it, I hoped. And just then another officer down towards the office called my phone. He was asking if I was okay. I said yes, I was okay, just checking everything out. But I asked if they had ever been targeted by an elk. I was pleased to hear when he started to laugh, but then he said, but be careful of the wildlife. He explained that they could be dangerous, but to just hang on because he was headed my way anyway to help me finish. Something about the other officer's warning made me a little nervous. And the fog is now laying down so thick that I can't really see anything. 
can't see if it is an elk or what. So now I'm thinking it could be a bear or something maybe more aggressive. So I climbed into my tiny patrol car and just hoped that the vehicle would protect me. And that's when I realized my car was facing west. So I turned on my brights. And you know what? I'm honestly getting goosebumps thinking about it. I saw what I had been sensing. Off to the west, something large was standing in the fog. And I'm telling you, it was huge. I don't think I've ever seen anything that large in my life. Yes, it was tall, but it was also very wide. Its posture reminded me a little of a gorilla's with arms that were long and thick, just like its chest. And I couldn't really see its legs because the fog was so dense. And the thing didn't really seem to have a neck either. Now, it looked like a gorilla's posture, but it didn't look like a gorilla. It didn't look like it even had hair. And it kind of looked bald, really. And gray. And it looked like a gorilla man made of, like, rocks. It was crazy. Between the distance that it was from me and the fog, it was a bit obscured. And it took off into the trees the moment I turned the brights on. By the time the other officer arrived, I was shaking. He didn't know what I was talking about. He guessed that maybe I had seen a bear. But it wasn't a bear. And there's no way in hell it was a bear. And also... I still haven't told my wife. I grew up in a suburb that was between New York and Philadelphia. It was pretty rural and my development was surrounded by farms. By the time I got to high school, more houses were being built as people moved away from the big cities for a lower cost of living. Things really started to change when online shopping took off. All the cheap farmland within a two-hour drive of New York and Philly was bought up by corporations and turned into shipping hubs, warehouses, and Amazon fulfillment centers. The whole thing really divided people. Most agreed that the prefab metal warehouses were an eyesore, but others argued that they brought in a lot of jobs, and they helped the local economy. Traffic got worse, the open fields and trees disappeared. It was all kind of sad, really but it did help the economy, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much. I moved back in with my parents during 2020 and the pandemic. I work a remote marketing job, so it was an easy move. I wanted to get out of Philly for the shutdowns. While I was home, I really saw how much the landscape had changed. I noted all the new warehouses and storage facilities, but there was one in particular that caught my eye. My dad likes to hunt pheasants and grouse, so we always had bird dogs growing up. English setters, Brittany Spaniels, and German short-haired pointers to be specific. Anyone who grew up with working dog breeds know that they are high energy and they require a lot of exercise. As I was the only one working remotely in the house, it fell on me to walk the dog every day. These aren't normal leash walks around the block. We always let our dog run free through the fields and the thickets for an hour or two. Unfortunately, there were only one or two fields left to run him in. It was in these walks that I noticed something strange about one of the new warehouses built outside my parents' development. For starters, it was separated from any other buildings at the far end of the field, with a long driveway connecting it to the road. The driveway looped around the back of the building where there was a loading dock, which was shielded from prying eyes by a thick patch of woods behind it. All the other warehouses in the area were built in clusters to reduce cost and allowed them to share common roadways and loading docks for the trucks. But this isolated warehouse looked like it was purposely built to be inconvenient. I didn't think too much of the isolated warehouse at first, but as I noticed more weird details about it on my walks, I started to suspect that something was going on in there. There were no windows and only one entrance in the back of the building. The door had a large concrete block in front of it with a narrow slit. It reminded me of something that an archer would hide behind in a castle in Game of Thrones. There was no fence around the structure, but while my dog was roaming in the field, I noticed poles stuck in the ground with some dome-shaped cameras on top. And I could also hear the mechanical motors whirring as the cameras panned inside their cases to watch me. 
I never saw a no trespassing or private property sign, so I continued to let my dog run around on the property. The fourth or fifth time I was walking the field, something glinted in the sun from on top of the building. It caught my eye. When I got closer, I saw the glint was from the glass of a spotting scope. Two men were on the roof watching me. This is the first time I was spooked by the whole situation. If it was a single guy with binoculars, that would have been one thing. But the spotting scope and the second guy made me think of those military movies where the sniper teams had one guy spotting and the other guy shooting. I cut the walk short and I went home. I didn't go back there for two weeks. The more I thought about the incident, the more I convinced myself that I was being ridiculous. No warehouse in the suburbs would have a sniper team on the roof. I was just letting my imagination go a little wild after seeing the cameras. Regular businesses care about corporate espionage, so there's nothing suspicious about having basic security. Plus, it wasn't like I actually saw a gun on the roof. Just two guys watching me, one with some optics. So I went back to the field because it was the only good place to let my dog off leash within walking distance of my parents' house. The dog got himself wedged deep inside a thicket chasing squirrels. I could hear him rustling around in the trees, but he wouldn't listen to any of my commands, so I trudged in there after him. I came out on the other side of the trees at the back of the warehouse where the loading dock and the entrance were. Standing at the edge of the thicket was an angry-looking man holding my dog by the collar. I approached him slowly, and I tried to force a smile. As I approached, I saw the man subtly place his hand to his hip, and it was then that I noticed he was wearing jeans and a dark jacket. This was a few months into the pandemic in June or July. It was way too hot to be wearing long pants and a jacket. This was a huge red flag for me, but I needed to get my dog. You can't be here, he said to me gruffly. Sorry there wasn't any signs, and I've always walked my dog here, I told him. He clenched his jaw, and he just pushed the dog towards me. And that's when I noticed a line of vehicles coming up the driveway. They looked like they were driving in a formation. An 18-wheeler was being escorted by two black SUVs in front and two behind. The man stepped in front of me to block my view. He then laid a hand on my chest, and his other hand still hovering over the jacket pocket. And he told me to leave the property now. I don't know what was going on at that warehouse, but I'm convinced that it is either a government site or something a large and powerful corporation wants to keep hidden from the public eye. Either way, I don't go back there anymore.